<laughs> Thank you. That's, that's like an airplane seat. Dude. <laughs> right? In the middle of the aisle. Oh, window. Window seat. Window, yeah. Window seat. I, Kat knows that too. And she's like, she'll very, very willingly give me the, the window because I just stare out the window the entire time. <laughs> Window seat. Yeah. I, I'm an aisle seat guy, mostly because I have to pee all the time. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you know. yeah. If that is an issue, then, then for sure. <laughs> I'm pretty good at, at holding it, especially if, like, you know, if you're, if you're three deep and you're like, I don't want to bother two people, mm -hmm. I can hold it for two hours and just suffer, I guess. <laughs> so today we're here with Sage Roddy. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Roddy? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. most people say Roddy, but it's Roddy. Roddy. And, um, dude, I mean, I remember looking at your Honda Element, like, YouTube videos five, six years ago, and it's like, before I even started to think about building my camper, I was like, oh, this guy's already did it. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, dude, I'm super excited to have you on and like yeah, to, to hear your story and what you're all about and why you started to live in your element and yeah, yeah, everything about you. So, cool. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to do this. So, we're, we're in Bend, Oregon. We're right? in Bend, Oregon, yeah, which yeah. is where I reside now. So, okay. Yeah. Now, now you're stationary. I am stationary. Yeah. Uh, almost two years no ago now went into a house full-time um deciding if that's a a permanent change right now my partner Kat and I are like r really getting the itch to get back on the road but we just have to get a lot of uh ducks in a row in order for that to happen so but we uh, we are kind of feeling like we want to get back eventually but we'll see what, what is change? yeah they, they, <laughs> they, they really do yeah they're like constant right so I what, what would that look like to you guys does it look like another element does that look like um, probably not an element because, you know, two people and a dog and we'll, we'll have a cat with us now, um, just doesn't, doesn't fit super well. Also, so we, we spent some time in a bunch of different rigs. One of them was, was a school bus, a, like short school bus, or actually two of them were short school buses. And, uh, what we found, we were traveling at the time and what we found was it was really difficult for both of us to be able to work because Kat kind of had to sit down at a computer all day and, and stay seated. Um, and my work, I had to be like moving around and, you know, when you're, when you're moving your vehicle, you got to pack everything up and like secure everything. And it was really difficult for both of us to be able to work. So kind of the path that we are, you know, looking towards headed down possibly is a truck and a tow behind camper. Okay. Um, and I'd probably have like a, a small nimble set up in the back of a truck and then we'd have our full, you know, like where both of us can, can work and sleep and that stuff in a tow behind camper. So probably that route eventually. And is, does that look, sound like full time to you guys or is it? Yeah, I think the, the dream for us would be, would be seasonal, uh, but... probably like six months out of the year in a, in, you know, a rig of some sort and then six months in a place that we hope to eventually buy we're not really like financially ready to buy yet but but that's what that's what we'd ideally like to do is is half the year in a place half the year on the road sounds so, fun yeah yeah best yeah. of both worlds fun. yeah i think i think so you know it's nice to just like have have a little home base for stability we've we've really appreciated and loved having the stability of our current home um through like you know tumultuous times life life throws stuff at you and and like it's good to have stability when you need it yeah um so yeah, yeah, yeah so let's take us back to okay. when you first started to live in vehicles i guess was the element the first vehicle you've ever lived in and how and why did you decide like hey this is something i want to do yeah uh the element was was the first vehicle that i lived in so i um, when I was 18, moved to, moved to Santa Barbara. I'm making a, a short story long here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, cool. And I started working at Trader Joe's when I was 18 and I worked there all the way until I was 26. I kind of was like working my way up there. I was a manager for a handful of years and, uh, maybe had a chance at, at like a pretty promising career with Trader Joe's. Um, and it was good work, but I just kind of at one point, realized that like I did not want to do that forever mm -hmm. um and so I decided to quit before I ever decided on any of the other parts of the puzzle <laughs> you've got to work out I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna leave and then and then I'll see what I do with my time after that had a fair bit of money I mean not not a ton of money but enough money saved up to be able to like travel part-time and uh at, at the time I had my dog Kopech and um I just wasn't really willing to leave her behind so kind of international plane type travel europe backpacking was out of the question um 
And so I, th- I think, I don't know what sparked the idea. My, my guess is it was probably Element Van Life, now Element Life, Nate. Nate. Probably everybody knows. OG, man. He's the OG, 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 OG absolute OG. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I do remember watching his videos early on when, like, I had decided I was quitting Trader Joe's. I hadn't quit yet, but I was, like, getting, uh, getting ready to. Um, and, yeah, just started kind of uh, formulating the idea and decided that I would travel around an element. I was like, he does it. Like, you know, it, I, I've got a dog, so it's, like, slightly more complicated, but not that complicated, especially if I was just kind of living off savings and not having to work and, like, go into a job and stuff. Um, so I wasn't, you know, I was planning on doing it for, my, I said, six months to a year is what I initially said. And, um, uh, you know, I, got, I guess I got, got that in, but... Um, wasn't planning on making it like, you know, for, for everything. And then I just liked it. So, <laughs> um, I already had the Honda element. So that's, that's sort of how I landed there. Well, that's, that's um, a solid plus. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had bought the Honda element maybe like five or six years prior used. Um, and, uh, I loved it. Great dog, a uh, great, great car for a dog. Yeah. Um, great adventure vehicle. Mine wasn't all wheel drive, which it, that could have helped it being a good adventure vehicle, but it was still fine. Um, and yeah, I was like, you know, why, why spend half of what I have on getting a better rig or, or most of what I have on getting a better rig when I can, I'm happy in this, I'm nimble in this and I can just go out and do whatever I want. So do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Hell Basically yeah. the, the, the whole thing there, I didn't, I didn't plan anything. Just, just kind of went, I had like a few, you know, stop offs yeah. that I needed to hit, but so you you mentioned when you're at Trader Joe's and you're like, this isn't what I want to do forever. Yeah. So what was it about traveling in an element that you were seeking out at that time? Do you just want to see things or? Yeah, I, th- uh, I think it was a little bit like explorative for me. I didn't know what I wanted really. Um, I didn't didn't know if like this type of like I don't know life choice would would lead me to what I wanted. Um, but I figured it'd be fun along the way, you know, yeah. in, until I figured out what that was or until one day I figure out what that was. Who knows if I've got it now or not. So <laughs> can, so can you share like a memorable experience you had while you're living in your element, like throughout those first like six months to a year? Yeah. Let's see. Some memorable experiences. Sure. There was a lot. I think kind of one of the, one of the things that like really uh made me realize how exciting it was that i had the freedom that i had is i went i went to quick shout out to our sponsor heroes hot rods thank you so much austin from heroes for supplying us with a swivel seat so if you're a honda element owner and you want to add the swivel seat to your honda element be sure to check out the links down below in the description let's get back to the podcast what's the name of the little town in utah it's somewhere in in southern utah northern arizona and i applied to to hike the wave Okay. And, yeah. and the cool thing about it was like you have to, there's only like, I forget, 10 people let in. There's like 10 advanced people and 10 day of people or day prior people. Um, but I was like, I have, I have nowhere to be. I can, I can stay here as long as I want until I get this, this permit to hike the wave, um, which I did. But I, I was lucky and it only took me one day. I got it on the first day that I applied. But, <laughs> But I was like, this is so cool that like I can, I can, you know, my, my time is my time. It's open-ended. I don't have like, you know, work deadlines to meet and all that kind of stuff that like get in the way of you being able to do stuff like that, where like, uh, I think about like have a soup eye, like hike, hike and those sorts of things. Um, you know, if you're, if you're working a job in Colorado and you basically have one weekend that you're picking to, right. to like, I'm going to apply for the permit for that weekend. Cause that's the one I know I can get off and then you don't get it. Um, but when things are a little more open ended, it gives you just a lot more opportunities to kind of go with the flow, and um, that was very indicative of of that sort of like realization in my brain. I was like, "Oh my god, I can I could do anything. Like <laughs> I could go anywhere I want here." So, yeah, you you are you aren't like limited by a time frame. It's yeah, this total yeah. freedom. Which you know that's not everybody's situation or reality when they are. It, it's not even been mine for for a lot of time that I've lived in vehicles. Um, you know, I, I worked here in Bend while living in my Honda Element and, uh, like in a brick and mortar place. So I, I didn't have quite as much flexibility, but, um, you know, it's still, it still provides you with a little more freedom than 
being tied to a rent payment house and all that kind of stuff. So totally. Well, yeah, now I have, I have those things. <laughs> But which which is in- interesting. You yeah. said you're, you're you're craving that like travel once again, mm-hmm. um, but you have all of that experience from when you were in your element. Yeah. So at what point did you decide to start like making YouTube videos and like kind of sharing your journey and also sharing like how you would modify your element to make it more livable for you and Copec? Yeah. Uh, I. So when I first set out on the road and was just just darting around doing a bunch of fun stuff. I was making basically like monthly recap videos for my family. Um, okay. I had a tiny little bit of v- video experience prior. I had like taken a, a class in high school, um, it, but I was like, "Oh, dude, I'm doing I'm doing so much cool stuff!" Like, let me. And so I made like three minute videos set to music, and it was just like highlight reel type stuff. Um, and uh, I found that I really enjoyed. I enjoyed filming, and I enjoyed the editing process. I enjoyed kind of the like. Uh, it's almost like a, like a diary of sorts. It's like the, here are the things that I did this month. I can go back and look at them. And, and, uh, so I, I enjoyed it. And then, you know, I had building out the element. I had, I had watched Nate's videos, other Honda element videos, other just SUV camping videos, um, and sort of felt like, oh, I should contribute to the ecosystem of, (laughs) of like, you know, builds that are out there. I made, I made a video, maybe a week into being on the road of my very first tour, which is still, it's still on my YouTube and it, I, it's, it's done okay. But like, I look back at it now, I'm like, man, I knew nothing about video. That was, that was terrible. Um, but you know, I, that, that's kind of what got me into video and into what I now do full time as a career. So. Well, so we're blocking the road. This is, oh, this is, no, I don't get thing go around. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The thing I never thought that would happen while we are filming a podcast in my element. This is super fun. So there's someone over here with like a dune buggy on this off-road trail. It's like they're getting out to walk around. Oh, it's all good. He's got a cigar in his mouth. Oh, man. It's there. And this guy's living the life. I know. I know. Uh, yeah. People in Bend like their toys. It's, everybody's got, a lot of people have snowmobiles and like quads and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, is there like a lot of snow that comes out here? Or um, definitely like towards the mountains. This like uh, the Cascade Mountains here. You can't really see it. It's cloudy today, so you can't really see them. I don't know if you saw them driving in at all. It was so dark. Okay, it was so dark. <laughs> like, hopefully, you get a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, they have a uh, barometric uh, effect called the rain shadow, where like it dumps all the precipitation on the mountains and then bend is just east of the mountains and it's relatively low rain and snow here uh we still do get rain and snow but it's nothing like you know 30 minutes that way so mm. yeah. so after the element because i know you've lived in multiple vehicles yeah. so there there's there is the element and then there's after the element yeah what <laughs> so what what motivated you to, to step into the next vehicle was that the astro was that the volkswagen and it was, it was, the, well, so I, I lived in an Airstream before the Volkswagen. So I, I went out for 10 months in my element and then got a job at an Airstream place, lived in Airstream for a year and a half. That was stationary though. Didn't move around. Didn't, it wasn't mine. I didn't own it. That was in Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, and then when I quit that, I, I quit that job, uh, because I didn't like it, and I mean, I felt that I didn't like it. It was it was not a good situation for me. Um, took a toll on my mental health, so I quit that and moved back into my element. But I also at the same time bought the van again that you saw, um, and kind of had intended to live out of that, mm. uh, just because it's a little more comfortable of a space. You know, it's got it has the pop top, so I could stand up and cook and stuff. Um, so my intention was to live in that. A uh, month in, transmission went out. I didn't really have the money to to like replace it. I probably could have, but it would have just you know sucked me dry. Yeah. Um. So was was in the element for, I mean, quite a while after that. But then that's kind of where it gets a little bit complicated because then I got together with my partner Cat. She had an E three fifty van, so like I had all my stuff in. Well, that's Cat's element too. So I had all my <laughs> stuff in my element. Uh, but like with sleeping cats element, you know, the the two of us and our two dogs wouldn't have fit in my element. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was Honda element, Airstream, Honda element slash van again, 
then Honda Element Slash E three fifty, and then <laughs> and then yeah, some other situations after that too. And, and the Astro, the Astros after that. Astros, yeah, I got the Astro about a year ago. Okay, um, I guess yeah, somewhat new, somewhat new, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, the Astro was kind of intended to be like a weekend weekend rig yeah. for me. Um, I got it after moving into this house, um, so I was like, I can I can use it as a work vehicle and daily driver, but then also use it as a the right size where Kat and I can be comfortable for a weekend, you know? So how how did you and your partner Kat actually meet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we met through Honda Elements. Hey. Uh, there's the short story, but yeah, the, the long one is, is basically uh, we ran across each other on Instagram. She she had like watched the story or something of mine. I can't. I honestly can't even remember exactly how it happened, but um, I I saw that she watched the story. I was like, "Who's this?" Uh, went to click on her and saw that she had a Honda Element stuff in her story too. So I started chatting with her. So I I slid into the DMs. <laughs> I was you're slid. very successfully. So yeah, that you know, <laughs> Yeah, out of boy. Um. <laughs> And we chatted for a while, and a, a few weeks later, uh, we went camping together in uh, Red Rock State Park in Southern California. I don't know if you're... Is that by Nevada? It's, like, headed out towards uh, Death Valley, sort okay. of. Well, um, yeah, that was the first first place we ever went, and, yeah, we spent spent a few days there. Maybe a month later, went went camping again, kind of made it happen, like, monthly-ish for a while. So you, got, so you guys both had your elements. And yeah. I both traveled to the state park. To yeah. There. <laughs> exactly. <Cute>. Uh, <laughs> I had mine. I still had my, at that point I was living in the airstream, but I had my setup in my element so that I could get out on weekends. Yeah. And Kat was like kind of building hers out, um, had like a shelving unit on one side and just put a pad down on the ground and stuff. Um, so we both had like camping rigs. We didn't have to tent camp or anything. Um, but yeah, we, you know, took pictures of our elements together and stuff yeah. because that's what you do when you get to come with the elements. You call it, you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But I assume we'll all take some pictures here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we might as well. We're here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what, what was, were you involved with the element community at that time? Cause I feel like in recent years, it's really kind of like taken off a little yeah. bit. It's kind of catching a, a little bit of a wave. Yeah. And I wonder back then I was, wasn't quite in, as involved as I am now. So I'm yeah. curious what it was like then. I... I got involved with the element community after I met met Kat. We had uh, we had gone out for a weekend camping, and I had seen that there was like a meetup in like Santa Ana. I don't I don't know. I think it was Santa Ana or something. I was like, oh, we should go to this. We both had our elements, so so we went, and that's how how we first kind of got connected with with people. There were a handful of people there that like you know still stay in touch with or or um, come across every once in a while. JR, I don't know if you know JR. Yeah. Um, Which JR? There's two JRs. Oh, there is. Yeah. So you probably, probably the JR is the original owner of Elements Society. Yes, that's the one. So <laughs> G, G, uh, the other JR is a close friend of mine. Okay. And he runs Element 44 Workshop. Oh, wow. And he does like off roading oh, Honda yeah. Elements and he builds like <laughs> custom lower control arms and oh, okay. always like cool custom stuff. So cool. there's two JRs now. Well, it was, yeah, Element okay. Society. Okay. JR. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I uh, met Fred. Uh -huh. What's his, what's his Instagram? Do you know Fred? It's got a f life. No, that's that's Rosa. <laughs> I can't remember. Everybody's an element pun. Right. It's <laughs> confusing, but uh, yeah, met met a handful of people there. Ended up going to a few other meetups over the next I don't know year and a half or so. Um, went to like a camp out in Alabama Hills and cool. Oh, you know I've seen footage of that. Yeah, there were like yeah. there were like I don't know twenty or so elements. Yeah. We all lined up yeah. in the big line. You know, like, the drone Just shot. a big photo shoot. Yeah, drone cool. shots coming yeah. down the line and stuff. Yeah, that was a very fun weekend. Um, and yeah, and then there's there's uh, like Chris Sayre. I don't. Do you ever met Chris Sayre? He's got a forerunner now, so he's yeah. he's yeah. yeah he's a, totally abandoned us. He's a <laughs> Um, anyway, real nice dude. He's come, he's come up through band in his element a couple times and stuff when we've hung out. So, um, but I'm, I maybe as you kind of came into being connected with the element community, I probably kind of sure. shifted out a little bit, um, not intentionally or anything, but yeah. So I, you know, I've noticed that you haven't really posted anything on YouTube. Is, yeah. is there a reason behind that? Like, um, yes, I, uh, I think I, I, I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if I have a good concise reason. It's sort of, you know, it's a, it's a mix of things. Part of it is that I just, I went through a bunch of like losses in my personal life and the thought of, of 
trying to keep that up was just even the thought of it was exhausting mm. to me um and uh i also it is since i started that channel to now i have you know i have developed a career in videography so like doing doing you know my own channel for fun is not always what i want to do when i'm like okay i just spent you know eight hours editing a video for work now now let me not even get up and just edit my own video or whatever yeah that's part that's part of it um and yeah i i think i just in you know moving to a house you're like okay i don't have as many adventures that i'm going on there's less less content for me to make and that kind of stuff so yeah um a lot of reasons. I would say the kind of grief of the losses was was the biggest one. I just I just didn't have the motivation to to uh, I don't know put all that effort into something. So and you know there's there's a part of it uh, at least for me. I'm not I'm not sure what the perception is of of like my YouTube channel from the outside, but from my from my perspective, it, it very much was like Kopech and me. And she was one of the people uh, people one of the uh, loved ones that passed. Yeah. Um, and so it felt a little, yeah, I have a, I have a bunch of like footage of, of her, like kind of in her final days and like some, some, uh, like sentimental things that I like spreading her ashes and that kind of stuff that like, I still, I'm like one day I'll compile that into a video, but, yeah. but I just, yeah, it, it felt like, uh, with Kopech passing my li life shifted so much that the channel, you know, didn't match up. So, yeah, I, I mean, I would have a hard time if I was in your shoes, like piecing together that. And yeah. Like, and then yeah. also, also just so personal. It's, yeah. Do we really want to share all that? That's a huge back. You know, it's, sure. it's like, hey, this, this. Sure, yes, I'm sharing part of my life, but some things are, you know. Yeah, you want to be able to reserve like things for yourself that, at the bare minimum, like, uh, you know, are taking into account your mental health. So, yeah. um, you know, I I feel bad for people sometimes who have these very big online presences where oh, they just man. don't really have like they don't have the freedom i mean of course they have the freedom but it's really hard for them to not share stuff because people are invested in their life and they want to know and yeah it's i i can imagine that's a pretty uh um difficult thing to, to have to balance yeah and if you're if you're like a youtuber or whatever it's good content that's good like those those yeah. those, those things are good content right and it's like okay how much do i share how much do I keep to myself? And some people are more than happy to share those moments where yeah. they're just like crying in the front seat or something like yeah. that. Uh, me from the other end. I don't know if you guys will ever see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 man. I don't know. Maybe happy to want to see that personally. No, you'd love to see you cry. No. Well, I'm, I'm attempting to run a, I'm just going to say, it. I'm attempting to run a marathon on Saturday. Oh, wow. So if I finish that, I'll cry at the end. Wow. <laughs> wow. Where? I don't know. I'm going, oh, just somewhere? Because like, I, Happened to be here. Okay. So I was like, not like an over. official marathon race, just to 26 on your I'm going to do it alone. Okay. So that's the idea. Wow. Yeah. That's even tougher, man. I know. Nobody cheering you on? Well, nobody's cheering me on, but my friends in New York are running the marathon at the same time. Okay. And I feel like we're kind of like doing yeah, it together. Yeah. Like, like, camaraderie. Yeah. Totally. Totally. If you want to just make a bunch of loops around my block and just, I can cheer you on every time you come Dude, by. they can just <laughs> a goo. Yeah. I'll take Melody for a few walks yeah. around the block. <laughs> Melody's your new dog. Yes, Melody's my new dog. How, how did that come about? Uh, so Kopech, Kopech passed um, January, tw let's see, January 2022? Yeah, January 2022. Um, and Cat's Dog Quirks passed that August, too. So we, we lost both of both of our dogs, and neither of us were quite emotionally ready for oh, another one. Um, and Cat was... I think maybe a little more emotionally ready, but she was sort of waiting on me to like, to say like, Hey, I'm ready for, I'm ready for another dog. Um, and I, I don't know, one day just started kind of opening up pet finder, looking for dogs and, uh, pet finder. What's that? Pet finder is a thing. Yeah. Pet, oh. It's yeah. Petfinder.com. Um, cool. <laughs> I think, I think we probably got there cause I was like dogs in band from <laughs> Google or something. And it was like pet finder. I was like, okay. Cool. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, saw her on there and uh, thought she was pretty cute. She was in, in Eugene, and um, it took about three seconds after meeting her for me to be a yes, yes on it, um, which I think that's the danger of, you know, meeting a dog <laughs> in general. Like, this dog has no owner, and it needs an owner, and I love dogs, and I love this dog. Like, what am I supposed to do? I had no, no chance there of not getting a dog that day. 
Melanie's great though. She's super she's, sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she's been she's been amazing. She she's uh you know got her got her issues. She she will annoy the crap out of other dogs. Like she just is so persistently wanting to play. But she's a puppy, so yeah. You know, hopefully she outgrows that and stuff. But she is the nicest dog, the most affectionate dog I've ever had. So. Yeah, she just rubbed right up against me. Just like, yeah. <laughs> put her whole body against me. Immediately have to warn you about the husky hair. It's... So can you tell us a little bit about um, Tiny Home Tours and how you kind of got involved with them and how that's going for you? Yeah, so Tiny Home Tours is a YouTube channel that uh, does tours of vans, buses, uh, RVs, and like traditional, you know, Tiny Home Tours with real walls and stuff. Oh, we're... Um, well, <laughs> yeah, real walls. <laughs> um, and... Uh, so, I, I mean, I imagine a lot of people who watch this type of stuff, Vehicle Dwelling, have probably seen a Tiny Outdoors video at some point. There's, they've got, like, a thousand videos on their channel over the course of, you know, 10 years of being around or something. Wow. But, um, anyway, I was uh, working at a bar here in town in Bend, and uh, my buddy Brian, uh, Brian Bear Butler, you, you know Brian, who's yeah. also a former Element guy. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I've never really talked to him. Yeah. I've, I may have seen one of his videos, so yeah. maybe tell us a little bit about Brian. Yeah, yeah. So Brian, I uh, did not know him, but he was coming through Bend once, and he reached out to me, uh, and we just immediately hit it off. Like, Brian, and to this day, Brian is is one of the best dudes I know, uh, one of my best friends in the world. Um, and, yeah, it took us, took us all of probably 30 minutes to, like, immediately become friends. Uh, and he, he does videography and stuff. He was working for like a hunting company and, uh, doing some other projects on the side. And he got connected with somebody who was supposed to be filming with Tiny, Tiny Home Tours. And that person was like, oh, maybe I could have you film it. Let me ask the Tiny Home Tours person, Chris is his name. Um, so Brian got approved to, to film a Tiny Home Tour. Uh, and I don't know, I think he sent in the one Tiny Home Tour and, said my friend Sage can knows how to edit. Um, and I think I I didn't edit that one, but I edited maybe like his third video ever. Um, and the owner, I think, didn't really have a consistent editor at that time. So the fact that I like was consistent even slightly was like a huge uh, step up for him. So he's like, yeah, edit. You know, you can edit as much as you want. Let me know whenever you want a video. I'll send one your way and you can edit it. Um, so for a while I was I was working at the bar, but I would edit like one video a week, maybe maybe two, um, and then pandemic happened, bar shut down, and I I was like, well, you know, I've got nothing else to do, I, so I'm just, I'm just gonna dive into the editing. So at that point I was editing three or four videos a week for Tiny Home Tours, um, and things started to slowly open back up, um, and there were like limited hours at the bar, and I told my boss like. Uh, just give those to other people first because I've got this other gig that I'm doing um, and I don't want to like steal hours from somebody who doesn't have an income source. And then I just never went back, never went back to the bar. The the work kept coming in and uh, yeah, opportunities with Tiny Home Tours, you know, kept kept coming uh, towards me and um, good situation. Eventually, Chris, the owner, was asked me to be the lead editor. So now I'm the lead editor. I So I film and, and edit for them well, well. and, you know, do some administrative type type work too so awesome that yeah that i mean in my eyes that's like an awesome success story it's like yeah. hey you met this dude at a bar and yeah all these like little things that lined up your editing experience you know and here you are like working in the youtube space that's yeah. amazing yeah i know it's i couldn't have couldn't have planned for it to you know happen that that well for things to work out you know as as well as they did um you know meeting brian i consider to be like one of the most life-changing things ever because now i have a career that I actually like and care about. And, uh, you know, it allows me to kind of work remotely and, yeah. you know, it, my, my, the trajectory of my life, you know, not working at a bar anymore has completely changed because of that encounter with Brian, who's also part of the element, element. I, I know, I, I, gotta, I know talk to him. I, I really, <laughs> I really haven't, you know, I don't know much about him. Yeah. So I, would, I would love to reach out to him and talk to him and see what he's all about. Yeah. He's in an astro now too. So. He's in an astro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is he, is he living in yeah, yeah, he's full time. He full time travels and really, yeah. So we gotta get him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a great dude, and uh, he's got he's got a podcast too. So no way. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. definitely. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's definitely into. I, I gotta hit him up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, during your time at Tiny Home Tours, has there been? I know it's Tiny Home, but you do a lot of vehicles there too. Yes. So has there been like 
couple of vehicles that you're like, oh, dude, that is so cool. And I could see myself doing that or just something that's like extremely unique that you saw that you liked? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, there's, there's kind of both those, you know, the vehicles that, that like, oh, that's good. That's a good fit for me. And the ones that I'm like, oh, that's, that's freaking badass, dude. That yeah. thing is so cool. Um, and as far as the ones that would be a good fit for me, I feel like that's ever changing, ever evolving. Like I, I can't seem to settle on a rig. Some people are like, I got one van and I lived in it for a decade. And I'm like, I had seven vehicles in five years or something. I don't even know at this point, but um so a lot of stuff comes across and i'm like that's great for a while truck campers were kind of like you know sliding truck campers or um what i was looking at i did a the the tour that i filmed and edited that has the most views on it it's like six million at this point uh it's uh now a friend of mine uh who's in a big kind of overland truck camper for super super badass rig and super badass chick um and uh i'm like i would it would be awesome one day to have one of those uh but you know, it just you got to just go with what suits your lifestyle. That probably wouldn't as much now as it may have three years ago. So yeah, have you seen um those like uh, scout campers? I'm sure you. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. dude, those are cool. Uh, yeah, but like, I was for sure on that train for a while. Yeah. The scout and uh, Kimbo, the other. Like, yeah, yeah, like the, the Kimbo one. scout like is odd shape that yeah. doesn't quite do it for me. Yeah, know? and I, I love Ellie here, but if I feel like I have the next upgrade might be like a truck camper yeah something. okay no, cool yeah. yeah it's it feels like sort of a logical step from an from an element yeah it's like okay i'm expanding a little bit but i'm not sacrificing like uh my ability to get around all that much and so yeah i think i think it is i think the subscriber step. count just dropped <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> welcome to the truck camper channel <laughs> So, you know, a lot of people who listen and watch these videos are people who, like, are attempting to do van life or they're already doing it and they're thinking about an element. It's kind of like my niche audience. Yeah. So, like, do you have any specific advice for those people who might be interested in trying a lifestyle, um, not specifically geared towards an element, just anyone who's living in a car or SUV in general? Um, yeah, it's funny because I, <laughs> I ask this question all the time in my own work. Okay. Like I, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a question right, that I ask right, when yeah, I you have to during yeah. the tours. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know that it's it's like the the answer that everyone gives, and it's it's kind of like overdone and cheesy at this point. But it's sort of like the just just do it. That is for sure a piece of advice. Like like at some point you have to reach your own tipping point. You know. Yeah. Um, mm. And and. And, uh, there are a thousand excuses not to, you know, that you can, you can say, oh, well, you know, I don't have the income to, to go on the road or I don't have the right vehicle for it yet. And, you know, some of them are legitimate, legitimate excuses. Eventually you have to reach your tipping point where, where you say, I'm doing this regardless of the obstacles that are, that are there. Um, and, and so, you know, the advice would be figure out what those obstacles are and just kind of start systematically knocking them over and getting, getting, you know, closer and closer to where you want to be. Get closer and closer to where you want to be. Yeah. You don't have to also, yeah, big one. Obviously I think element community people probably feel strongly about this, but you don't have to get like a hundred thousand dollar rig. You don't need a water heater. Like you don't need a ton of this stuff. feels like you do cause we're used to them. But, but like you can live very simply, like, you know, so many element people do. So during your time in your element, did you ever like get the knock? Uh, no, I really, I've never wow. had the knock. Wow. I've never had the knock. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've stealth camped a fair bit too. Yeah. Uh, uh let's see. I, I've had like, um, in Kat's van, we had like homeless persons screaming outside our door and the cops showed up to like you know deal with a homeless person um oh actually they they banged on the vehicle next to us i think and they were like shouting for for someone and the person inside that vehicle was like wrong vehicle they're not here or whatever anyway cops came and we saw like flashing lights and we're all like hunkered down like please don't come and kick us out this is in portland which you know awful place to <laughs> oh well that's where i'm going next so okay. that's good to know yeah. you. no Thank you. it's a day you'll be fine and then yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's when you're in a in a bigger rig it gets a little but this i've i've camped in portland in my element a whole bunch and never had any issues so 
and I, that's the beauty of the element. It's just yes. like it's just the car. Yeah, no one takes a second glance, and you no. can just be any. Got your window shades, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the closest thing I had to like a middle of the night encounter. Is is you know somebody screaming outside? <laughs> did you did you ever consider like adding the e camper to your element? The e camper is like the pop up camper. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I when I was first like figuring out how I was going to get on the road, I looked at them, but it just wasn't in the budget. It was like, I think at that time they were starting with zero bells and whistles at like 6,000 bucks. Um, and I also would have had to get a, my mine didn't have a moon roof. So I would have had to get a moon roof cu- cut, which would have been another like 1500 or something like that. So it was never in the budget. I would have loved to have had one. Um, but you know, I, n- I never felt like in want, I was, you know, Spending time outside and supposed to inside. It'd been nice to to have the extra bed and be able to do just you know living storage and all that kind of stuff down here. But when when you were traveling around, were you like a hiker? Did you snowboard? Did you like mountain bike? Like what was your like? Hiking go- was kind of the, okay. the go to activity for me and and Kopec. Um, that was sort of our our thing together. I do I do it a lot less now, um, but uh, you know that. The during the time when it, I had no job and was just traveling around in my element, we probably were hiking three to four days a week. Right. Um, you know, just go, you drive a few hours, then find a place to camp and and then go to the hike that you're looking at. So, I mean, around here in bed looks like there's just like limitless yeah. places to just like park and sleep. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. It is. There's a ton of. I mean, that's. That's why this is like such a such a hub for nomads. I, I don't know if you know, but be, like Bend attracts nomads all all year round, especially during the summer. Um, but it's just a place where pretty much every van lifer at some point comes through and stays for a while. I have I have friends like from my time on the road who will come and stay in Bend for two months at a time because um, there's you know different spots you can move around to, and you just have that stability. People kind of feel like it's home a little bit because they get to know town. Um, because you know, there's places like this where there's tons of BLM land. There's there's stuff that's like less than ten minutes from downtown Bend where you can camp legally free. Um, so it's just such a hub for for people living in vehicles. Yeah, that's what it seems like. I yeah, like I was parked outside the city. I'm ten minutes in, and I'm like, okay, there's this really yeah. nice coffee shop. I like I'm editing. Like, yeah, yeah. What what is that festival they do? Descend on Bend. Yeah, there's there's kind of two in this area. Descend on Bend, and then basically one month later is Northwest Nomads. Okay, so that that's like uh, Labor Day or Memorial Day. Which one's in September? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> Whichever. No, they'll tell us in the comments. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Somebody's gonna be like, "You don't know Memorial Day? <laughs> How offensive!" Uh, <laughs> um, like September, uh, the month of September is like the time between those two events and so uh i sent you the the pin for phil's trailhead yeah. there's there's a lot there that hey, is like shout it out your spot i mean it's not a secret okay, okay. but no means a secret so <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> um yeah that that lower lot can get packed i i actually have never camped there i had my own spots around town that i went to and i never went to that one um but i have heard that like during that time it's basically a party in that lot like people have music and lights and stuff and you can you can go further back onto the onto the road, the dirt roads and stuff, and and get secluded from that. But there's a spot that's just like booming. So I gotta add that to my list of things to do. Yeah, I'm like fun. <laughs> yeah, and you should definitely go to Descend on Bend. It's it's uh, you know kind of. It, I don't think it's the OG van life event, but it but it was early on, and it's kind of iconic, and and it's a lot of fun, and there's you know a lot of good people. There's a lot of people who now have community on the road will say they met their friends, their community at Descent on Bend. Mm. So it's a good, it's a good, good, uh, thing for, I think any nomad to do at some point. It's a little bit of a rite of passage, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, next year I have to check it out. Yeah, definitely. Well, we have elements of the dragon. I feel like that's, and that's our element. Oh, I wanted like, to go. Yeah. yeah. Come, come, dude, come next yeah. year. How many, how many elements were at this year? Well, so, oh, uh, no, Tacoma me was two hundred and seven. Tacoma was two hundred and seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't on the dragon bigger or no? No, it was. Uh, it was. And okay, then, the Tacoma one. Yeah, you are. Okay. A bunch of us from SoCal drove up to Tacoma for that. Gotcha. Yeah. You gotta come. Yeah, I, I know. I actually really kind of wished I could could have gone to this because it yeah. like it was a lot of fun. And yeah, you're so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah it's just hours or something like that. <laughs> it would have been a lot easier for me than it was for you. <laughs> yeah, but 
So one question that I've been kind of closing these podcasts with um, is when do you feel most in your element? We're not re referring specifically to the vehicle. No. Yeah. You <laughs> Yeah, do you open them to an interpretation? Um, I think there is something that that lights up in me when I am when I am outside being active. It's something that I, you know, currently don't uh, take advantage of enough. Uh, but there's there's something I think Cat will probably attest to this that like when I start hiking, I it's almost like I get more energy even though I'm like you know three miles into a hike or something because I just get excited about, about being outside, doing physical activity, like seeing cool stuff, you know, it, it, uh, brings me life, brings me joy. And that's, that's probably what it is. It's, you know, it's hard to do that sometimes when, when life gets in the way. Um, but it always, you know, when you get back to it, it always gives, gives you that, or gives me that same, you know, feeling of like, this is, this is what I love to do. That's what you love to do. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Well, dude, thank you. Thank you so much Thanks. for for the shower and the laundry. <laughs> yeah. Time. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you need to like scalp internet for the rest of the day, like literally stay at our house for sure. Day. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you for sharing your story, man. Of course. So it's awesome to hear from the OG himself. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. Nate, Nate is the OG. Nate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nate and Phil Chatter are the OG. Phil, was, you know, yeah, I've met both of them, actually. Have you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep keep extending this. See, that's what, I, yeah. that's what I'm saying, you know? Like, you're the, you're, I think you're part of the OGs for sure. So thank you again, man. Um, I hope to see a YouTube video one day. Yeah, yeah so, you know. I would love to get back into it. I do. I I uh, get the itch to, to make videos for myself again and, and to grow the YouTube channel because it, it was very fun for me for a time and... Maybe yeah, one day. maybe one day. If you guys want to check it out, I'll leave the link down below so you guys can see it. So my old build. I have four four uh, separate builds that I've had in my element. So uh, you've got several videos to watch after this. Very very informative stuff. So we'll leave all the links down there. Dude, what a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Of course. It's great to, great to hang out and chat and get to know you. So. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, we'll see. I can subscribe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> subscribe to see.